Seraphie does not look like a carry at first glance, but in this video, I'll prove to you that she's one of the best carries in this set by going over the build, what items and augments to take, how to play before level 7, during level 7, then how to play after level 7, what you do if you get contested, and then we'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. This is a slow roll comp, meaning we're rolling down to 50 gold every single turn for 3 star units. We will be slow rolling at level 7 with this board. Here we're running Seraphine as our main carry, Zarya and Graves as our secondary carries, Zyra in there to give us evokers, Pantheon is in there to be a tank and to give us whispers, Rakan is in there to give us mystics, and Zack is in there to give us lagoon and guardians. The whole game plan is to stall and let Seraphine ult multiple times. When she ults, our entire team deals magic damage on hit with her auto attacks, which ends up being a lot when we have 7 tank units. You will slow roll with this board until you hit Seraphine 3 star, and once you do, level up to 8 and play bard or another unit based on your augments. I'll talk more about how we can change our level 7 and 8 boards based on our augments as well as what we can add in at level 9 later in the video. Seraphine is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for her first. She has one core item and that is Morello. This item makes all the allies she buffs apply Morello on hit, meaning we will burn almost the entire enemy team. The second and third items want to be mana generating items, but these are not crucial for the comp. So here is a tier list of the best second and third items to put on Seraphine where Sojin is the best mana generating item, and Deathcap or Archangels are the best damage items. The reason why I'm not going in depth on our second and third items is because they are not super important. Since our primary win condition is auto attacking a lot, Zeke's Herald is much more important than the second and third Seraphine items. This is because we buff the attack speed up 3 units, and attack speed is what we need to auto attack faster. You will generally build as many of these as you can, and they want to go on Zeri. I also mentioned that Graves is one of our secondary carries. You want to itemize him with tank and healing items, but AD items also work. Here is a tier list of the best Graves items for this comp. The reason why AD items are in B tier is because a lot of the damage from Graves comes from his auto attacks that are buffed by Seraphine. So if we can keep him alive, he will continue to auto attack a lot and keep applying that on hit magic damage. Tank items want to go on Zac if you are in a position to 3 star him, if not they want to go on Pantheon. The best tank items to build is Protector's WoW, as it buffs our entire team when we are clumping around Seraphine. But other standard tank items like Bramble, Declaw, Warmox, Redemption and Stoneplate also work great on them. If you get a spatula, you want to build Guardian Spat and go for 4 Guardians at level 8. You put this on Pantheon. Lagoon Spat is a bait, as you never want to go for 6 Lagoon in this comp. So if you can't build a Guardian Spat, then it will end up being a dead spatula. The best augments to take for this comp are Axiom Arc, Celestial Blessing, Cybernetic Uplink, Evoker Harder Emblem, First Aid Kit, Guardian Harder Emblem, Mystic Harder Emblem, Second Win, Thrill of the Hunt, Preparation, Stand United, Trade Sector, Triforce, Warrior Crest only so you can put it on Graves, and Binary Airdrop. I mentioned a lot of augments there and the best ones out of those are Cybernetic Uplink, Evoker Harder Emblem, First Aid Kit, Second Wind, Better Together, and Trade Sector. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here's the quirky cheat sheet from last set so that you know what to expect for the reroll Seraphine cheat sheet that is available right now. The carousel priority for this comp is Belt, Rod, Tear, then Sword. From there, we can find a lot of the units for the comp in the early game, but they aren't as strong until you have Morello Seraphine. Therefore, you don't have to pre-level to 4 on 1-4 as you're not going to be good to go if you hit Seraphine. The best opener is to have 3 Lagoon with either Kai'Sa or Talia carry, so that we can start stacking the Lagoon bonuses as soon as possible. But that won't happen every game, so some other openers that also work are Ezreal with Swift Shots or Karma carry. In the early game we can also make items, you want to always slam Morello, Zeke's and Protector's WoW. And you can also make other AP items for Seraphine. Making AD or healing items for Graves is not preferred, but if you have a good item holder for them, then you can go for it. The goal with this comp is to be level 7 with 50 gold or more on stage 4-1. Therefore, we can play the early and mid game as if it was a standard fast 8 comp. In other words, the way we play the early game depends entirely on what opener we hit. From there, we can play for a loss streak or win streak. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in depth on that subject. After the Crux round, you shed a more direction towards a comp. The general requirements to play Seraphine is to have one component for Morello and another component for Zeke's. You also want to have some of the pieces for the level 7 comp on your board already, like Zack, Zeri, Seraphine, as it makes the mid-game transition a lot easier. Much like the early game, we can play the mid-game aggressive or passive. If you are win streaking from Krugs, you can level to 6 on stage 3-2 and even level to 7 on 3-5. You can also roll a bit at both of these stages to maintain the streak. But know that the goal is to be level 7 with 50 gold or more on stage 4-1, so don't dig too deep. 
If you are lost streaking, your strategy depends a little on how much HP and gold you have. What I do most often is to lost streak in the early game and mid game until stage 3-5, where I will level to 7 and roll for the level 7 board of that comp. If that is too expensive, then just focus on saving HP until stage 4-1. Once you are level 7 on stage 3, 5 or 4, 1, we ideally want to get up to 50 gold and start slow rolling, but first we have to do a checkup on our HP. If we are low, typically 60 to 50 or lower, we need to roll down to stabilize. The goal is to hit this board with Seraphine 2 star, but sometimes you can get away with being weaker depending on how strong the other players are. Graves and Pantheon can be a bit hard to hit at level 7, so you play Silas over Pantheon and you play Aphelios over Graves until you hit them. Once you start slow rolling, your 3 star priority is Seraphine, Zeri, Zyra and Zac. Recon 3 star is generally not worth it and Pantheon and Graves are way too hard to 3 star at level 7 so don't even try them. You will slow roll until you hit Seraphine 3 star and once you do, go to level 8. Sell the rest of the Zeris, Zyras and Zacs you have on the bench to hit level 8 faster, unless you only need 2 or 1 more for the 3 stars, because in that case we can most likely hit the 3 stars at level 8 anyways. Sometimes, if you are fairly close to all of them, you can chase those 3 stars as they add in a ton of value to our team, but in the majority of cases, we want to go to level 8 to fit in another unit. When you hit level 8, you have a couple of different options. The standard units to add in if you don't have any trait augments is Bard against AP matchups to give you 3 mystics, Soraka if you need more healing, and Yasuo is added as he's great CC and can also be another secondary carry. Sometimes, you can also add in a second 2 star Pantheon or Graves. If you have a plus 1 Cannoneers, you definitely want to add in Aphelios for 4 Cannoneers, as you get a lot more damage into Graves and Zeri that way. Similarly, if you have plus 1 Guardians, you want to add in Braum for even more tankiness there. Never go for 6 Lagoon in this comp, as the units you add in don't help your team at all. It's a giant bait. Unfortunately, this comp is not flexible, so that's about it with our options. But in the majority of cases, adding in Bard will do the best. If you get to level 9, you add in another one of the legendary units mentioned earlier like Bard, Soraka and Yasuo. Or you can add in a dragon like Terra to make your Graves even more resilient if he's putting in a ton of work. If you get contested, what you do depends a little on how you get contested. You can get contested by somebody else trying to play the same comp, or you can get partially contested by someone else playing Seraphine and Zeri in other comps. If you get partially contested, you need to see what comp the other person is playing. A lot of the time, they will just be using a 2 star version of Zeraphine and Zeri. In that case, we are in a less favorable position, but we can definitely still hit everything we need. We need to pay attention to their board though. If they are picking up more Seraphines than they need for the 2 star, then we're in trouble as now we're getting full contested. If that is the case, things are not looking great. You have two options from there. The first one is to play this comp normally, but instead you push for a fast 8. This comp can still squeeze out top force though so it's not the end of the world if we get contested. The second option is to contest and slow roll at level 7, but know that you will be in a much weaker spot if you do this. To do this, you need to be farther ahead than your contester, and you also need to constantly be checking how close the other player is to hitting Seraphine 3 star. If they are starting to get close, then you have to roll down in order to hit before them. To understand the positioning of this comp, we need to understand Seraphine's spell. Her spell has a 2 hex radius, and it shields and gives damage to all allies within that range. A 2 hex radius looks like this, where any ally outside of the Ezreal border is not getting buffed. Therefore, we will sort of clump around the Seraphine in this comp. With that said, let's move on to general positioning with this comp, which looks like this. Here the 2 hex range goes around here, it covers all our units. Zack is up front to soak up most of the damage, and to proc his guardian shield early. Pantheon is on the same side as Graves to shred armor for him through Whispers. Seraphine is on the third row, so that she will not move, and so that she will also hit our frontline with her spell. Graves, Zeri, and Zyra are in a line to all get buffed by Seraphine, and to get buffed by the Zeke's Herald on Zeri. Rakan can be positioned anywhere where you can get value from his spell, but you still want to be inside the Seraphine radius if possible. Now let's move on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Zaya. Zack is baiting out the Hecarim ult, it's fine for him to be outside of the Seraphine ult range as we are trading it for not getting our entire team CC'd. Rakan is baiting the Jace ult away from our team. Graves is lined up to take out Shivana as we can hopefully burst her down before she ults. Against the second guy, the big threat is Ao Shin and Shivana. We have positioned Rakan on the same side as Shivana to make sure that he disarms her after she walks up. We have Graves a bit out from our team to not take a ton of damage versus Shivana. Besides that, there isn't too much we can do, 
If we spread out to not get CC'd by Bard, we will have less damage ourselves, so think twice before spreading out, as we can lose out on a ton of damage if we do so. Against the third guy, the big threat is Olaf who has RFC in this example. We are yet again using Zack to bait out the Hecarim CC, Rakan is positioned to disarm the Olaf, Pantheon is taking over the role as the main tank here to make sure the enemy team doesn't get too close to our Seraphine. Graves is positioned to target Pantheon as he's next to Olaf, resulting in Olaf taking cannoneer damage. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they are available for YouTube members and patrons, and links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.